Hi there and welcome. Today I want to share a cross validation example with you. I have a data set here that's called Biomarker. It contains 90 observations as you can see here in the environment. Um, we have 2000 predictors and as you can see in the console um, they have names from x1 to x2000 and then we have one dependent variable it's called result and it's got type 1 and type 2, type 2 being more frequent than type 1. And now we look at some of the predictors, the first 10, the rest of them are in the same range and you see here in the console the values all range between 0 and about 100. Not all of them reach the extremes but this is yeah, the way the data set is constructed. So um, 2000 predictors is quite a lot, especially with only 90 observations. So I want to do a pre-selection of variables. And here I use a decision tree model, R part. And I don't use it to predict something. I just use it to get an estimate of variable importance. And you see that the decision tree here in the console chose 18 variables. Um, and so there are some names, x and then a number. These are the predictors that were pre-selected. And here the names function gives me a vector of these variables. And now here in line 18 of the script, I generate a data set that just contains these 18 predictors plus the dependent variable result, but it still contains all 90 observations. So this data set is called biomarker2 here. Um, and now I'm going to train a random forest model to see what we can do with these 18 predictors. I'm using the Coret library um, because it has a nice and convenient way of doing cross-validation. Here I just choose simple five-fold cross-validation. Of course, ten-fold cross-validation or better repeated cross-validation would give us more stable results, but it also takes longer to compute. And um, we see the next model will have a greater um, runtime. So to keep the runtime low for this video example, I just chose the simple cross-validation method and um, well, the example works with this method as well. Um, there's one tuning parameter for random forest models. It's called mtry, and we see we get the best results with mtry equals 18. And we have an area under the rock curve of 0.85. The theoretical maximum would be 1, a perfect model. And a random guess would result in an area under the rock curve of 0.5. So we don't have a perfect model, but we're a lot better than a random guess. So it looks like this model is somewhat useful in predicting the result, even if it does make some test set errors. Um, here above, I just did a confusion matrix of predictions and actual observations. So this relates to the training set error, and the training set error here is zero. So on training data, the model can predict perfectly. Uh, we can see this here in the confusion matrix and also here in sensitivity and specificity and accuracy they're all one um, but here resampling in cross-validation shows us that test set error is a bit higher but still it's a useful model and now we want to compare this to a random forest model that uses all 2000 predictors and I'm doing the calculation now because it takes some time to calculate on my machine it takes about 20 seconds to calculate so it's the exact syntax as before I use parallel processing here with a do parallel package because that speeds up computation a bit um, I'm using rock area under the rock curve as performance metric again and now the calculation is finished 21 seconds and um, we check the test set error, oh, sorry, I made a mistake, we check the test set error here, and we see um, three tuning parameters options were tested, and try number of predictors um, that are available for each split, 2, 63, and 2000, and the best model uses all 2000 predictors, which is somewhat strange. And what is even more strange, the area under the rock curve is only 0.57. So remember, 0.5 would be a random guess, so this model is not much better than a random guess. We also see that during 
doing cross-validation sensitivity is zero, so the model cannot predict one of the classes at all. So this seems surprising. The model seems useless, judging by these numbers. And to understand why this could happen, I'm going to show you the data generating process. I didn't load the data, but I generated it. And here you see this number, uh, line 6, generates 2,000 predictors and it's complete random. I sample the numbers from 0 to 100, 90 observations, and it's random number generator. The same holds true for the dependent variable result. It's also completely random. So there's no relationship between predictors and results and this data apart from pure chance. So looking at this data generating process, the question is not anymore why the second random forest model performed so badly. Quite on the contrary, this second model seems to give us a reasonable test set error um, estimation saying that the model is useless and it should be useless because the data is useless for prediction because it's just random. So now the question is rather why the first model with the preselected variables gave us a much higher estimate of test set performance with an area under the rock curve of 0 0.85. And how could this happen? We did use cross-validation in the first case as well. You see here I specified cross-validation and, and here we do get cross-validated results. And the answer for this is that we did variable preselection here and we did not include this variable preselection process in the cross-validation process. So here we chose some variables and this selection doesn't generalize to a test set. We do have some random correlations between predictors and dependent variable, but it's only random and we chose 18 variables that do have a random connection and then only afterwards we start cross-validation. So this was our mistake and I hear, hear and read that this mistake is actually being done quite a lot, especially with data similar to this, meaning that the number of predictors is a lot higher than the number of observations. So whenever you have data sets like this, remember not to do variable preselection outside your cross-validation process. I hope this was a clear example. I hope you liked it and thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.